Now, the Muslim Ummah, rather divided into two types of education. One type of education, when we have secular education, they acquire the so-called secular education, which are called a formal education. They acquire knowledge of mathematics, science, history, geography, but they are far away from the deen. On the other hand, when we go to our madrasas, we teach about Quran, Hadith, Sharia, Fiqh. Alhamdulillah, may Allah give them a reward. But they are unaware of mathematics, science, history, geography. So we wanted a balance between the two. To have the best of both. Which, when we visited most of the schools that I visited, now the thing is changing. In the past six years, I've realized that some schools have become slightly closer, alhamdulillah, to the concept that I have. But most of the schools, they may be having maybe three periods a week on Islam. Or maybe one period a day. Maximum I came across was two periods a day on Islam. And what was the main objective that a child, when he passes from school, he should have the knowledge of Quran, Hadith, Sharia, Fiqh, and science, etc. That I could not find. Do I visit the best of schools in America, in South Africa, which is supposed to be very much advanced in this field of Islamic schools, UK, Australia, Malaysia, etc. So that we thought that let's make an effort. And with Allah's help, Alhamdulillah, we in Bombay, Alhamdulillah, about approximately six years back, or rather five and a half years back, we launched our own Islamic school by the name of Islamic International School. Because for my children, we had to do it. Though I was prepared to see to it that gear up my child, though putting in a convent school by giving all the so-called education at home. But then we thought that we should make a sample school. And Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, we ventured with this project in Bombay, and Allah helped us, and with Allah's support, we launched the school. And Alhamdulillah, from day one, the response that we received from the people of Bombay, from the Muslims of Bombay was tremendous, mashallah. The response was such that though the school was absolutely new, we hardly publicized it. We decided to start the school. There was only three weeks publicity, mashallah. But immediately when the school was launched, the amount of response we got was phenomenal. And it was overwhelming that ministers, they phoned our school to see to it that some of the friends get admission to the school. It was good, mashallah. You will hardly find a minister phoning a madrasa and telling that, you know, I want a seat in your madrasa. We find that in the convent school. In India, most of the convent school, the ministers phone and they try and use the influence. But alhamdulillah, we are very strict as far as admission criteria is concerned. We are very strict with the guidelines. And unless a person fulfills our guidelines, let him be a minister's son also, we won't give admission, alhamdulillah. The difference that is there, that we appreciated that the movement that was started by many of the philanthropists and educationists throughout the world, it was a good movement, at least giving them an environment of Islam. So I was really happy that in the Western countries, whether it be USA, UK, there were schools in which a child could at least practice his Islam. When the school that we launched, we had a different system we had, that I wanted a striking balance that when a child passes the 10th standard, he should become at least an average alim when he passes from Darul Ulum, as well as be able to compete with the best of convent schools in that city. That was the aim. And with that target, we started the school. And we did many unconventional things, which people told it's not possible, but Alhamdulillah, with Allah's help, we did it. The timing of a school is quite long. It starts from 8 o'clock to 4.30. For nursery, it is less. We started school from nursery, from the age of three. And the first year, we had nursery, junior kg, senior kg, and first standard, only four classes, only four grades. And the timing from first onwards, first upwards, is from 8 o'clock to 4.30. And people said the timing is too long. Students won't be able to take it. But alhamdulillah, we divide the day into 12 periods, each of 35 minutes. On an average, two periods every day are for extracurricular activities. Martial arts, whether it be taekwondo, judo, swimming, whether it be computers, and all the extracurricular activities. On an average, two periods a day. Every child, it's compulsory, should learn swimming, taekwondo, 
judo, martial arts, for the boy, football, etc. And the balance 10 periods, 5 periods are in English and 5 in Arabic. Our school has a dual minimum instruction, English and Arabic. Arabic is the language of the Quran. It's the language in which the last and final revelation was revealed. We realize, I realize the drawback, that because our parents did not think it important that we should learn Arabic as a language, we know it's a drawback, even today. So we want to see to it that our children, our next generation, they should know Arabic as the mother tongue. So five periods are in Arabic, five are in English. But naturally, the five periods that are then Arabic, they're Islamic, whether it be Arabic language, whether it be Hivs, whether it be Talawat, whether it be Hadith, whether it be Quran, Tafsir, and all the Islamic studies that we have, when we give the Tafsir of the Quran, it's not in English or Urdu. Like back home in India, Pakistan, we have the Islamic studies in Urdu. In the Western countries, we either have in Urdu or we have in English. There, we have in Arabic, Arabic to Arabic. So the ch